Um, so not that any of your faces will be on it, um, but when you ask questions, still ask questions as you normally do, and we'll still take questions from people at home via our social media avenues and one other, one other place. So. All right. All right, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 2013-2014 PBL National Officer Team Program of Work presentation. All right, so um, this year's theme is Excellence in Action, and we are extremely excited to, uh, to present this with you and also to our members, advisors, and people watching from home. My name is Donnie Iorio. Um, I am serving as a second-term national president in Phi Beta Lambda, and this is going to be my seventh year in the organization. I want to introduce you to a team of wonderful leaders whom staff has gotten a chance to know over the past uh, week. And for those of you that attended conference, hopefully got to know, network, and visit these people's campaign booths. And they are going to uh, be leading the association for the next year. So I want to let them introduce themselves, starting with the um, myself and then the three other national officers, followed by our regional officers. Hi, everybody. My name is Bo Cobb, and I'm serving as the National Secretary. I'm from the great big state of Rhode Island this year, um, and I'm just very excited to work with all of you. So. Hi, my name is Stephanie Boardman. I'm the National Parliamentarian this year, and I am from Iowa, and I attend the University of Northern Iowa. Good morning, everyone. I'm Morgan Malat, and I'm serving as the PBL Treasurer this year. I'm from Oklahoma. I'm currently going to Oklahoma State University. Hi, uh, my name is Karthik Krishnan. Uh, I used to be a national officer, and I'm glad to be back here again. I um, am from the great state of Maryland, and I serve as your Eastern Region Vice President. Hello, I'm Katie Fusick. I'm the North Central Region Vice President. Um, I attend Illinois State University. Hi, my name is Glenn Gilead. I'm the PBL Southern Region Vice President. Uh, I attend the University of Louisiana in New Orleans, Louisiana. Good morning, my name is Katie Clark, and I'm serving as the Mountain Hill Region Vice President from Colorado. And I'm Brian Colson, the Western Region Vice President from Texas State University in Utah. Great, so thank you all for introducing yourselves. Um, so as we're all familiar with the mission of FBLA PBL, it's really important that we tie that mission into everything that we do. I always say that's my favorite part about a nonprofit. We're not in it for the bottom dollar. We're in it for the people. Um, and we're making people better. And we're making people better through our mission. And our mission is to bring business and education together in a positive working relationship through innovative leadership and career development programs. So everything that you're about to hear from us today about our program of work ties directly to our mission. Otherwise, we frankly shouldn't be doing it. And I think that's really important for anyone working in nonprofit and also national, state, local level to make sure that we're tying our programs back to our mission statement. All right, so now I want to talk about our strategic plan and basically taking that mission and breaking it down into four sectors. And these are um, four tenets of how we're able to uh, how we're able to measure our goals and achievements. So first off, customer service. We want to provide the best customer service of any CTSO, career technical student organization, out there. We want to make sure that we're promoting positive image for our association and that we're making the public, general public, aware of what we're doing, what our mission is. We want to talk about the relationships that we develop. Who are we going to partner with this for this year to make our association even stronger and provide more benefit for our members? And then also, what resources do we intend on using for the year? And what resources do we intend to give to our members? So first off, we're going to talk about customer service. And I want to talk about some membership numbers right from the start. So last year, we had we ended the year with 511 chapters and 10,803 members. So we did see an increase in the number of chapters and a slight decrease in the number of members last year. Now, for this year, we're setting a goal of 525 chapters and 11,235 members, which is a 4% increase um, in membership and a 3% increase in chapters. And just uh, for people that, for a visual aid, we have both these, um, both these metrics on the graph. You'll see on the left side, the left bar shows our increase in chapters over last year, and then the bar graph showing our membership numbers over the past several years. Now, it's important to note that while last year we did experience a slight decrease, 
we did not retract back more than one year. It was only a one-year decrease. And then um, just some more metrics for you. Um, that, like I said, that three and four percent growth. And then finally, for retention, retention is so important. We always talk about getting new chapters, but we have to make sure that we are keeping our current members, current advisors, happy. We're making sure that they're receiving what they need, and therefore retention is so important to us. Last year we had 85% retention, which is the largest we've ever had in 5 Eight Lambda. It's really great. 85% of chapters came back. And um, we want to see that increase, and we want to see that increase to 87%. And what that equates to is 444 chapters that are going to be returning from last year to this year. Um, now, how, how are we going to do that? How are we, it's great to set goals, but how do we intend to provide that service to our members? And this year, we decided to take away some of our seasonal membership sweeps from our program of work and create a yearly charge. And this is something the National Officer Team really discussed, really thought about, and we're incorporating this into all of our membership programs this year. And we call it the power of one. So what the power of one is, is it starts with getting the retention from our chapters from last year to 100% where you were last year. If your chapter had 10 members, we'd like for you to have 10 again. And then the power of one raises your membership by one member. Now, chapters are going to blow this out of the water. We all know that's going to happen. We're going to see chapters with 10 members from last year show 50 on the books for this year. Obviously, that's the power of 50 is a little bit bigger than one. But still, if every one of our chapters had 100% retention and a membership growth of one member, that would blow our membership number out of the water. We would reach our goal. If every chapter, instead of recruiting one member, they hit the 100%, but they recruited another chapter, that's also going to hit our goal. Um, and then also, we really do want to market this to our members. We want this to be a yearly charge from our national officer team. And um, to do so, instead of designing the logo over the past three days, we're going to utilize our members' skills and talents to have them participate and create our logo in a logo contest. And you're going to hear it only takes one uh, throughout this presentation because it's so true. Just one uh, person can make a difference. And um, we're going to give some recognition at our conferences, too, for chapters that obtain the power of one distinction. So with that, I'm now going to turn it over to some of my other officers to talk about ways that we can continue providing services for our members. And I'm going to start off by introducing Stephanie to talk about our bylaws assistance program. One of our main tactics to create that excellent community service that Johnny talked about is a continuation program that was started last year. And that is the bylaws assistance program. This program was designed to help local and state chapters create and revise their bylaws. It is common now that many schools are requiring bylaws in order for a new chapter to attain a charter. So we will be promoting this program through all social media accounts, as well as doing my main discussion topic for the National Officers email blast. So if you know a chapter that might be interested in the program, please contact me because I would love to make bylaws a fun and easy program. I will now turn it over to our National Secretary, Bo. Awesome. So I'm going to talk about the National Officer Hotline. So the National Officer Hotline, it was launched last year. And it had great success, actually, during training. Um, I heard that all the phones were blowing up, actually, when we launched it last year. So this year, we're really going to push it. And we want to see it provided 24-7, so you can actually text or call. And then also on top of that, we're going to make it so, well, actually, here's the number. It's 805-2-GO-PBL-1. So basically, we're just trying to make ourselves more transparent for you all. And now I'll pass it on over to Johnny to talk about our um, next program. Um, actually, I did want to comment one thing about our, our hotline. Last year, when we gave this presentation, we put the number up on the screen, not thinking anything. Um, about a minute later, I heard my officer's phones ringing, and I, I'm thinking, oh, this is so embarrassing. We should have turned off our phones. And we found that they were members calling to say hi and ask us questions, which is exactly what we want you to do. Um, there is really, you should never feel like you're abandoned and you have no one to turn to. You know that you have your state teams and that your national team's also here for you. So please uh, give us a call. Don't be afraid. Play it, make it a game, which officer is going to answer first, because it does ring all of our phones at the same time. 
And with time zones, we should be able to hit just about all hours of the day. But I can't guarantee that at 3 in the morning you're going to get a response, but we'll call you back the next day. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Glenn to talk about our next program now. OK, so a new and innovative program that um, resource that we created is the boardroom. The boardroom used to be uh, the state officer boardroom that was accessible to state officers. But we wanted to give these resources to all our members so they can use them in their chapters and their states. So that's why we created the boardroom, which is amazing. And we'll show you a little uh, picture of it. But it'll have uh, it'll access it'll give you access to resources and forums where you can post discussion topics so that all the members can interact with that. And then we'll also post different ways where you can connect with your national officers. And we'll post um, other resources like our POW, our program of work, and our meeting minutes from our uh, Google Hangout events. And this is just a look at what the boardroom would look like. See our discussion uh, side where it has our trending conversations and what was posted this month. And then it goes over to our resources such as leadership tools and membership tools and ways to contact. And then there's a link for more. Uh, tools that we can use, and then connections to all of our social media outlets, including the national site, which is at the bottom, and a site of uh, area for uh, members to post their questions for the discussion topics. And just a really quick thing, now that I would like to add about the boardroom is this is actually a program that I'm very excited about. So even in Anaheim, we were already posting and asking you all your questions of what you wanted to see in our program of work, and this was one of the main things. You all really wanted to find a one-stop shop. And I think that by using the national website, it's going to be awesome. You don't have to use social media, although please like our pages. Right. So. And we actually heard this in our state officer meeting at the NLC. The number one thing we heard is we want a way to communicate, and we want to be able to communicate with you and with each other. So um, this is really an exciting way to do it. We also heard that social media is great, but there needs to be other avenues besides using Facebook for everything. And we're excited. To, uh, to launch this now. It is not ready at this point in time. I'd say look out for it in the next couple of weeks. And then um, finally, this is not something that we're just going to publish in the next couple of weeks and be done with it. All of our, all of our meeting minutes are going to be on this website, and we're going to be constantly updating, um, updating this website with information so that you, the members, can still see what we're doing and keep that level of transparency for us. One final tagline. Um, we know this is something that you guys want. But we want more feedback on what you want to, what we, what we can put into this, so we can give you um, the best resources that uh, we have available. So, so text us. Uh, That's more. Text us email. Instead of calling. Right. Um, I'm going to talk really quickly about the virtual chapter. With two of our national officers being on the virtual or being members of the virtual chapter, including myself and Karthik. We really wanted to focus a little bit on this. So one thing we're going to do is provide more direct support to the virtual chapter with providing resources for them, simply on how to be more involved in the virtual chapter and a how to on how to start a local chapter after school. And um, yeah, that's basically not about way of it. So that concludes our customer service goal, basically providing more resources for our members of basically everything from getting involved to um, oh. Excuse me, um, liking our Facebook pages and our Twitter pages. So I'm going to pass it off to Kenny Fusick, who is going to kick off our image and awareness goal to talk about social media. Um, every year, social media use gradually increases. This year, we would like to increase our reach on Facebook by 85%, which is a total of 6,000 likes. YouTube will be a big resource for our members. Um, with as much information that is on YouTube, this would just be a, a really valuable asset, and we'd like to increase use by 54%. Twitter is on the rise. We'd like to increase our followers by 82%. And then, of course, LinkedIn. It's a professional website where our members can market their professional accomplishments. And we'd like to increase our group members by 15%. Now, these percentage uh, um, increases seem really big. When we think of percentage increase, we usually think of, you know, you, you're just talking about the power of one. Um, but last year, we saw a significant increase in the amount of social media usage. And um, we see 8,000 total followers. And this is between all of our um, social media mediums, not just PBL. Um, we have a lot more than 8,000 members in our association. So this is, a, this is an opportunity for us. And I, we're very excited to make it happen. Awesome. So just kind of building off of what Johnny said, 
Um, my personal goal on this is going to be to oversee with the Facebook groups and monitoring and making sure that we're going to hit those likes. So we've already started developing programs and tabs. So if you actually go to the National Secretary and the National President's page, we're kind of testing it out right now with the software, uh, where you can actually just click right on the very top of our pages, and you can type out a form to be on our email blast that we were talking about earlier. And then also, we're going to be extremely active with the PBL group because you all are awesome, and so many innovative ideas are coming out of there. So. And I'll pass it over to Brian to talk about our YouTube goal and how we're going to head it. So over the past couple of years, video use has gotten to be a very, very big thing and a very useful resource. Um, this last year, we were able to utilize a lot of tools such as Google Plus uh, or Google Hangouts, as we are right now streaming this video live and our presentation live to all of our members, which is just great that those resources are available. Uh, this year, we plan on utilizing our YouTube channel, which is FBLA PBL Inc., a lot more, and we want to actually clean up the YouTube channel a little bit. We've got a lot of content on there, a lot of old content, stuff that needs to be updated, so we want to go through, sort it all out, put it into playlists, and replace some of the, the older content and update it throughout this coming year, so you'll be able to see a lot of that. We'll have a lot of videos explaining how to do CMAP and work your way through and become more involved throughout the year. So we look forward to working with YouTube. Our next social media platform that we want to talk about is Twitter. Um, and there are a couple ways that we're going to keep our membership involved. Um, the first is developing unique hashtags that will help us sort um, your feedback and your input, um, categorize it, track the data, um, and um, really see what our members are saying. Um, and then also maintaining um, the national officer Twitter pages um, that each of us have already, um, as well as the at PBL on the national page. Um, just giving you guys more content and responding to your question and your instant, and giving you guys that instant feedback that um, is so prevalent in that generation. PBL hotline blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> and the last social media account that we will be actively striving to maintain a presence on is LinkedIn. Through the years, we've noticed that the FBLA PBL group on LinkedIn has obtained numerous discussions. So our goal this year is to actively monitor those discussions, to connect with our members, and to help them when needed. So one important thing to note with the social media is that it's great to want to do all of this, but it's also very important for us to be able to measure um, how we're hitting our goals. So over the past year, we've seen a large increase in our reach. And that means not only people that have liked our page, that have shared our content, and that have learned more about our association. So throughout the year, we're still going to be monitoring um, the metrics of social media to ensure that it's staying effective and that the time that we're putting into it um, is correlated to a positive result for spreading the word of our association. Just another small thing, though, that I would like to add is that, you know, whenever you go into a marketing classroom, they're always going to tell you it takes three times to actually sell yourself on a product. And the thing is, is by increasing our reaches and by increasing all of these goals, that's what we're doing. People are getting these impressions that might not like our pages, but they see when people say, I like FBLA PBL, and they will see the statuses that they like. So that's really why we're increasing these programs. Okay. We've talked a lot about how we're going to communicate a lot of these new programs and platforms um, through the email blast, but I kind of want to elaborate more and let you know our plans with the email blast. So ultimately, like I said, they're all about keeping our members informed, letting them know what's going on, what programs are going on, what they're due, and different things and ways that we can help them be successful in the programs. Ultimately, what we're planning is on all of the even months, you'll receive a national blast which will be a compilation of things between your four national officers. That would be Donnie, Poe, Stephanie, and myself. Then on all of the odd months, you'll receive a regional blast from your prospective regional vice president. So depending upon what region you're in, that's whose regional blast you'll get. I think this will be a really great tool to communicate with our members on a very steady basis for you to be able to get information from all of your officers, but at the same time not get flooded with it. And then one more thing. This is a really great tool, but in order for you to get our email blast, we do need your emails. 
So please remind uh, and ask your advisor to take the time and make sure that your email is put in during your registration. By putting it there, we're able to determine what state you're in so we can send you the appropriate regional blast and we can send you the national blast and you won't have to sign up for an additional email. It's all done during your registration. So um, very important. We'd like to communicate with you and we do need those emails to do so. So uh, finally, we just finished talking about um, our image and awareness and how we as an association need to project and how we would like to uh, get on with social media and email blasts, communicating with you. And now we're moving over to relationships and who are we going to be um, working with over the next year. So the first one that we see is the March of Dimes. The March of Dimes is an organization. It's where, uh, they're a national service partner. And their mission is to improve the health of babies. And we've been partnering with the March of Dimes for a long time. In fact, we're the largest national youth service partner with the March of Dimes, raising about $500,000 annually for, these, um, for the foundation, which is pretty great because we beat, as students um, and advisors, we beat corporate giants in the amount of money that we're able to fundraise and help all the babies and families that are affected by prematurity. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Candy to talk a little bit about what we as uh, both your FBLA and PBL national officer teams, because this is a unified goal, um, are planning to do for the upcoming year so that we can increase and still continue to work with the March of Dimes. We would like to see um, an increase of um, fundraising from last year by 11%, which is roughly $550,000 this year. Ways we are hoping to do that is obviously raising awareness. Um, one of our big things that I'm really excited about is our family spotlight. A lot of members want to know, like, they like raising money for March Times, but we want this to hit closer to home. So every month we're going to spotlight a member who has been affected by prematurity or had, you know, a premature baby. And we're going to spotlight them on social media, in our email blast, just so that we can connect with our members and let them know that we're not just doing this for everyone else, but we're also helping ourselves and members that have been affected by this. One of the big ways we're going to do this is we're going to put purple into action. This is going to be a toolkit that is going to provide resources for our chapters. It will give them uh, resources to raise awareness, resources and tips and ideas um, for fundraising, and then just overall tips for success for their chapter to accumulate more and help March of Dimes. Our next relationship that you know we want to build is with a key stakeholder in our organization, the government, who supports our organization, all CTE organizations, through Perkins funding. Um, and this is all about having a continued conversation or continued dialogue. Um, and that dialogue started yesterday when your national officers and I traveled to Capitol Hill to talk about continued support of Perkins funding. But it needs to continue from there. It needs to continue at the state level, um, because at your states is where. Um, the distribution of Perkins funding is really discussed. Um, and to enable that conversation, prepare you to have that conversation with your local of officials, um, we're developing the Perkins Funding Education Module, um, which will be adaptable to state officer trainings and local officer trainings um, to give you education on Perkins funding, tools and resources to help you better advocate, an interactive platform to have conversations um, and, and network and build uh, more information and more tactics on how to better advocate for better distribution of Perkins funding. So the next thing that we, we want to focus on, very important, is our relationship between the different divisions, uh, working with uh, FBLA and the professional division, or and middle level now as well. Uh, one of the because we really are a lifelong uh, organization association and by working with each other we continue to lifetime <laughs> I, I think lifelong is <laughs> same thing <laughs> anyway which is because we are a very very tight-knit organization and the, the better relationship we have between the different divisions the stronger we are so what we want to do this year is we're going to be working closely with the state officers throughout the year and running the state officer track at the NFLC's um, what we're going to do during that time is we're going to go through training, we're going to talk about communication and how we can work better together. And one of the things that we want to introduce is a monopoly themed uh, program which all the state officer teams will be able to work for. And we thank the Utah FBLA officer team for their idea 
of the board that has already been created, which is an online program that we'll be able to utilize and make this easier for ourselves. So we thank you for the, for your program. Member made, by the way. So this online interactive game was made by our very own members, just an showcasing an FBLA member this time. So showcasing the talents of the students in our association. Power <laughs> <laughs> um, So we talked about CTSOs earlier. And we want to talk about maintaining that, uh, that line of communication. So yesterday, I was given the opportunity to sit on a forum with some students um, and leaders of other career technical student associations and talk about what opportunities we have in the future and what are some of the, you know, our biggest accomplishments, how do we work, what are our missions, and it was really great to, to sit with some excellent leaders and talk about um, our associations and how our mission statements really help the people we serve and they have a, they have a direct effect on the people we serve. So it would be a shame if those conversations only happened once a year. Now, national officers have determined that we want to communicate with other CTSO national officers talking about best practices. What's worked in your association? What hasn't? What's your association doing right now? Um, mission statements. Maybe you had a really great conference and you just want to tell us about it. So there's actually a Facebook group with all the national officers from all the CTSOs in it. And we do communicate on there, but we want to make it our own charge that we want to communicate more. And then also, Last February, which is Career Technical Education Month, also the um, FBLA PBL Week falls in Career Technical Education Month, we had a Google Hangout with all the association presidents. And we were able to talk about our association so that way all of our members could understand what career tech is and why it's so important. We understand that education happens both inside and outside of the classroom. And that's what our associations do. They take education outside the classroom in a real world environment. And we understand the importance of it and want to make sure that that can be done again so we can have another Google Hangout and we can really publicize why career tech ed works. So I think everyone with this association understands and agrees with that. And we're excited for that. So we just talked about our relationships and ways that we're able to communicate with other associations and with other divisions and our other counterparts at the state level. So a lot of relationships. Um, and we're really excited for that this year, especially the state officer training. Um, can't wait to see all of our state officers at the NFLC. And now we're going to talk about our final, final tenet of our strategic plan, and it's going to be resources. OK, so we've already hit a little bit on where it is that we get our resources from. I want to go ahead and clarify, too, for you all at home that aren't clear, resources aren't resources like we talked about that are going to be on the boardroom. Resources are our funding that help us be possible and help us keep continuing. One, uh, like Karthik had mentioned, was our Perkins funding. The other is our membership dues. So if we can continue to grow our organization, we'll grow our, our, we'll grow our resources in that division. But where I feel like we have really the most potential to grow and really the most potential to make an impact is with our sponsorships. So this year I'm going to continue with the National Treasurer's Action Council, but I really want to kind of change the direction of it from the, from the get-go. Instead of this being an, an opportunity for you to get involved on the national level, I want this to be an opportunity for us to highlight our members and the connections that they have personally already in their lives. All, come, all comes back to the power of one. What is it with that one member and what could they do for our organization? Um, I feel like our ultimate goal is really going to come down to continuing what we've been able to do over the last three years in getting 100% of our competitive events sponsored. I know it's, it's a great, great feeling to take home a trophy from Nationals, but it makes it that much sweeter whenever you get to take home a check, too. So that's something we want to continue to do for you all. Donnie? Great. So we got to talk to you about our program of work, and we're really excited to um, that we got to share it with you. Um, this is really a great team of individuals that have a lot of background and a lot of experience in our association. So we thank you for the opportunity to allow us to serve you this year. Um, we do have staff in the room, so staff, you please ask us your questions. And then we also, to my understanding, we've gotten a lot of text messages with questions um, to our hotline. But if you'd also like to ask questions on the YouTube channel by leaving a comment, you can tweet at us, you can post it on Facebook. We're giving you a lot of options to connect here, but we'd really like to hear your questions and things that we can answer for you. So, starting with staff. 
Okay. Right. Um, the boardroom that you talked about, is that like going to be a joint boardroom between FBLA and PBL, or is it just PBL? Um, well, right now, um, this was an idea that really was formulated at our training, um, and this is something that the conversation will continue with the FBLA team. Um, hopefully, you're watching. Hi. Um, but this is something that ideally would be an association-wide boardroom. And that just makes sense that we'd have all of our information in one place um, showcasing the transparency, and that way also members can still communicate and ask the questions that they need to ask in one location. Um, don't want to speak on behalf of the FBLA team, but we'd like to give them the opportunity to use this as well. Just a quick cut in actually, does anyone not have a copy of the actual program award? We'll, we'll hand those out now. So. In the beginning of your presentation, as part of your image and awareness, you said that you wanted to um, have the general public become aware of the FBLA PBL mission. How do you plan on going about that? That's an excellent question. I don't want people to think about, oh, FBLA PBL, let's join so I can just go to conference, right? That's not the way that we should be selling ourselves as an association. Conferences are, are one of the best tenets of our association. Our conference director just gave me a stare. But, <laughs> um, but there's a reason you go to conference, and it's because of what you're learning at the conference. You're, you're going to those workshops to learn more about business. You're going, to those, um, you're going to compete in competitive events to showcase what you know and what you've learned through your business education. So that way when you go to an employer, you can say that you place first in the nation in hospitality management and really showcase that you have something and that you've taken the effort that maybe some other students have not. And it's important that as we promote ourselves, we're not just promoting the, the easy sales. We need to promote ourselves as an inclusive organization, association, that really, if we do, we care about our students and we care about our mission. Um, and then one last question. Sure. Um, how do you, I know in the past you um, introduced FBLA members to PBL members, and that helps start chapters as well as, I mean, um, the grow chapters as well if they go to a school that has PBL. But what do you guys plan on in particular this year to try to retain FBLA members and introduce them to that's a great question, and I, I think we have a lot of answers from people up here. So I'll give I'll give a short one that that's important to me, and we'll let a couple others interject as well. But um, one thing we did this past year, and it was the first time ever, is we had a senior networking session at the NLC. It was an opportunity where all of our um, FBLA graduated seniors that were in attendance got a, a ribbon that said they were a graduated senior. So first off, they were able to connect with each other. Um, and then PBL members that were in attendance were able to talk to those seniors about where they're going to school, talk about PBL, and then we actually had this wonderful workshop put on by our wonderful conference department that had um, a forum for these members to interact with each other and then talk about um, questions about college and also talk about Phi Beta Lambda and how your experience in this wonderful association does not end as a senior in high school. And if you're not going into the collegiate division, we also talked about um, professional division and how that's an option as well. So that's that's my personal favorite, but we'll let some of the other officers speak to it as well. And I guess too, if you want to touch on like the ones who don't necessarily go to the conference, okay. how do you go about introducing your division to it? Okay. So how would you go about introducing the division GBL. if they aren't going to the right. conference? Well, honestly, what we're doing for the most part is it's all through telling the advisors and the conferences have so many members that already go to them. By wearing them, it's kind of like my social media idea. The more people that we're impacting that are at the conference, the more impact that we have on them in PBL, the more they're going to talk about how awesome we are. You know, at the national conference, you may have seen some of us at the FBLA booth, just or at the FBLA conference at the PBL booth, are you discussing and getting that information? And the advisors that were there, we actually, you know, a lot of advisors signed up for PD at the booth and were very interested about does this school have a chapter? Because I've got a bunch of students going there next year. So it's all just about having a positive impact and a positive impression on as many people that we can get face to face, but also through social media as well. Also with that, uh, working with the state officer teams with our state officer track is going to have a great influence because we're, that's some of the stuff we're going to work on with the state officers 
how to get some of the members who aren't going to be attending the, the NLCs still excited in all the different programs. So that would be a great impact. And he's not just obviously talking about FEO. He's talking about the FELA um, state officers. We met, we've met even a, a couple um, in our time here, and we just really want to encourage you know, FELA. We are one association, we're one organization, we want to work together, and that's what we hope to do is like encourage FELA, work with them, like tell them to, if they have a question, reach out to us, that's what we're here for, and vice versa. Like it's great to bounce ideas off each other. What we sometimes even get, you know, encouraged and inspired from their ideas, and so I think it's just working with them and kind of reaching out with them. It's all about embedding that organization-wide initiative of, you know, one association, lifetime association. I think that that starts with, you know, creating metrics and tracking articulation of high school to college. And it's hard to do that without getting that kind of data. So we're trying to figure out ways um, to sync up and see where uh, that articulation is happening and, and, and being able to track that so that we can create more resources and, and have more conversation and dialogue about enabling that articulation from the high school division to um, the collegiate division, the collegiate division to professional division, and the professional division to great advisors who make good, you know, high school division members. So. Thank you. So, before we take another question from staff, are there questions from from our members? Okay. <laughs> Zoom checking clear. Oh, they were excited to call us during our presentation. Oh, okay. But no text messages. <laughs> All right. Well, any last final questions? I just think you guys have done a wonderful, wonderful job. I I love that you're focusing on retention. I mean, that's so important. You send such a great message to the membership that we care about what we have. We're always looking for new members and new chapters. I think that's wonderful. The work you're going to do with the Perkins information, that's going to not only help us nationally, but I think help everyone across the country supporting the Lucky Dimes. I mean, I, I really think that you've covered everything and added so much value uh, to the organization as a whole. So we're just delighted and so appreciative of everything you've done. And I know you're going to get lots of emails and lots of questions. Just waiting until you finish your and phone calls. Phone calls. Phone calls. And you take all those between what two a.m. and yeah. Uh, I, well, see, I signed up for the day shift. Brian signed up for the night shift. <laughs> so <laughs> the deal is, I'm going to be straight with all of you that are going to call at three o'clock in the morning. Is I'm going to call you back at three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> the next day. The next day. We'll stick. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you very, very much. Thank you very much. Brian. So, and just to close out for for our friends at home. Um, if you do have any questions this year, please don't hesitate to contact us. We are here to serve you. So thanks, and have a great year. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.